They know when I ain't doing what I'm supposed to. And I thank God that people watch my back here. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Sad thing about it, they heard they missed the uh, best part, so now we got to get a little louder and make up for that, right? But I, I am thankful to be here tonight, and, you know, we've had some long days up here, and we do a lot of work to help the community and do what we need to do to do God's work. But God has blessed all of us in this ministry through our family, through our days of being up here, and it's it's just uh, when you get to a point in your life where you stop looking for all these things and you just accept the things that he has given you. You know, you might be here tonight and maybe you drank and smoked up everything that you ever dreamed for. But God can give you another dream. Yes, can. God can give you a new life. Yeah. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Y'all look weak on that now. Come on. Let's go. It's my job to get y'all psyched up and fired up, amen. amen. You know, I need some firing up and psyched up a lot of times. That's right. And when I hear y'all saying hallelujah, amen, and I see you praising the Lord, that makes me want to get a whole lot louder up here. Right, there you go. Right. But it's good. I told uh, Benji, I walked to the back a while ago, and I said, you know, it is so good. I was kind of looking around, and I was seeing people mingling together and talking and laughs are going on and i've seen smiles on faces that's what it's all about y'all we we lived enough of our life with with frowns and we lived enough of our life being hurt by the drug and the alcohol and it's time that we take some privilege in life now and give ourselves some back amen, amen. amen. and i want you to know here tonight we may have gotten into so much stuff in life that it may take a lot of time to fix our life but I, last week, if y'all was here, you know, the guy come out and he talked about his addiction and he was a baseball player. And he said that evidently that it wasn't his future or plan to play baseball because he ended up in jail and working the streets and selling drugs. And, you know, I heard that testimony and I thought about how he said that he had to go to prison and he had to live his life in jail, but he become a Bible teacher in jail. Yeah. He started teaching the Bible in jail and having Bible study and how he was supposed to go to another, what is it, another trial or something and, and he was supposed to go to another jail and none of that happened. God blessed him. He come home. He ended up studying the Word of God harder. Then he ended up becoming a minister. Praise God. That's what God can do to your life if you will let him work in your life. Yes. Yeah. It may seem like you got a long ways to go to get there, but God is working on you now. Yes, he, is. he is putting that puzzle together. He is shaping you. He is forming you, and you can't even see it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get into this right here because I get to preaching here in a second, and, and I'll be going to skip the whole point here tonight. But, you know, the way I look at it, I do whatever the Holy Spirit <laughs> wants me to do and how he wants to lead me, so... We're going to go and get these five things out of the way, but it's five ways to stop addiction. Now, you may say here tonight, well, it's going to take a long time to stop it, but I'm going to give you five things that will curb it. Amen? Amen. That will give you the strength to uh, maybe not go through it so hard, or you might even walk away and say, hey, I'm clean and sober. I don't have to worry about nothing today. But the first one is to set a quit date. You know, step one, it talks about we were powerless over our addiction and our lives had become unmanageable That's right. well the first thing we had to do like said they quit date is we had to admit that we were powerless over our addiction yes, yes, and that our yes. lives has become unmanageable That's true. the only way that you can get your life back in, into a manageable way is you have to stop doing what you're doing because yes. that's not working that's right. then you got to find a way that works and first you got to admit that you got a problem so that you can fix the problem. That's right. Amen? Amen. So when you don't admit that you have a problem and you're not setting a quick date, a day that you know that you're going to stop using or go get help or whatever the situation is, all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on your addiction. Uh -huh. You need to rip that Band-Aid off no matter how hard it is, how painful it is, and you need to go through the procedure of recovery. That's right. And the only way that you can start the procedure of recovery is you have to admit that you got a problem and set a date to quit. Amen? And you stand by that date, on, no matter how hard it is, Come and, and on, you pastor. follow through with that date. Come on, man. The second one, distract yourself. 
instead of giving in. All right, so we look at the long journey, right? We look at how hard it's going to be to quit. We look at how hard it's going to be to get through our consequences from our problems in our addiction. Uh -huh. We have caused a lot of harm in our lives. Yes. Maybe we've gotten in a lot of trouble or facing a lot of trouble. But it's not the end of your life. That's right, Pastor. Don't, don't, don't fail yourself before you get to the point of being blessed by God. Uh -huh. Because what it is is, just looking at that man last week talking about how he had to go through drug addiction. He had to go through jail before he ever realized what God's plan is. But God had a plan for his life just like God's got a plan for your life. Uh -huh. God can use you in any place on this earth. That's right. Trust me, I know. We, we moved over in this community and we done knocked on about every door and a big radius. We have done what we spoke to to introduce ourselves as Christians and that we love people and we want to tell them about Jesus and we told them who we are and why we're here and how we got here. But we have to not look at the long or the big picture. We must look at the small picture. Uh -huh. We must look at it as if you're not going to fail. Because if you look too far ahead, you're going to miss what's in front of you. That's right. And you need to understand here tonight that that has happened to you about everybody here. Yes, sir. So when you start looking at all your problems, you start looking at all the, the hurdles you got to cross, you're going to miss the blessing that's right in front of you. And, and think about, you may need to go through those problems. You need to go through those hurdles to get to where God needs to be, where he can use you. Amen. Amen. A lot of people are ashamed of addiction. My mom, I hate to say this, but I love my mom to death. But when I, when I come out and I told my family, me and my wife had determined that I wasn't going to let the devil shut the door on this and keep me quiet. So I come out and I told everybody, that I was a sick and suffering addict, and that I'm not ashamed of it today. I tell people today, even me preaching, I'm not ashamed of telling somebody that, yeah, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. Yeah, I did stuff that I'm not proud of, but God delivered me, and here I am today. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. I thank God every day that he has given me a new life. It wasn't Jamie who did the life. It was Jamie that just followed the obedience of the Holy Spirit. It was Jamie who was willing to submit my life to God of my understanding. And my God is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and I'm so thankful today that my Lord has gone before me and that he has died on the cross, that he had took the sins of the whole world uh -huh. on the cross. He who had no sin. Uh -huh. So he had to take the sins of the whole world to make things right. And I think about how he went to that cross and, and how even people that followed him denied him or, or people that was out there in the crowd didn't want to associate with him because they were scared that they would be taken and killed or, or put in prison or something. Uh -huh. And I think about the willingness Jesus had and the love he had and the, the heart he had for us and, and, the, and the work that he did on the cross and how special that is in my heart. And then I say, well, how can God love a person like me? Right. Sometimes my mind will say, Jamie, all the stuff you've done and what you're doing now, you could never make up for what you've done. And the old devil will tell me, he says, God don't love you. God don't care about what you're doing. Right. What you're doing is in vain. It's no good, but that's a lie from Satan. Yeah. See, Satan wants us to think these things to keep us held back. He don't want us to get any smarter. He don't want us at these meetings here tonight because he is scared somebody here is going to hear something at the word of God that changes their life. Uh -huh. Amen. We all know here that the word of God cuts like a two-inch sword. Amen. It cuts through bone and marrow, praise God. Amen. The word of God is powerful. Yes. But we know Jesus has already uh, won the victory. We're sitting here today and we're worried about our future. Nobody here should worry about your future. The only way you should be worrying about your future here today is if you have never gave your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to know here tonight, I love you either way, but I love you enough to tell you the truth here tonight. That's right. I love you enough to care about you so Jesus can come in your heart and show you what life is really like. Teach, that, that you don't have to go out these doors here and search for happiness to try to fill a void that you'll never find. Amen. I can save you a lot of time here tonight. Yes. 
I searched for that boy. It almost cost me my life. It liked to cost me my wife and everything that I ever owned. It liked to cost me. Teach, but I found out, and y'all probably heard this before, and I'll say it again if it'll help somebody here tonight. I found myself laying in a clock in a cold room. All y'all know what those rehabs are like. Yes. You go in there and it's packed. Everybody sitting beside you that I'm pulling extra cart so you sitting about six inches from somebody you've never seen in your life. That person's sick. This person don't know what's going on. You sitting here trying to have this attitude like, I ain't like them. I don't need to be here. You know where I'm coming from? Uh -huh. All of us had that thought when we went into rehab or jail. Oh, I'm, this is the wrong place. I ain't like this. Uh -huh. But we were like that. And we all like that. We're the same way as the person that was sitting beside me, that was sitting beside you, whether you went in jail or rehab. But I'll never forget it one night. I was scared, and I was more scared of what I was going to face when I get home. I had court stuff pending. I had stuff that I was afraid of that was going to come up. And, you know, I look at people, how they judge other people. There's a lot of people doing stuff that just never got caught. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, somebody will judge you for what they see you doing, but they're doing something behind closed doors, but just ain't never got caught. So what makes that person any better than the person that got caught? It's, it doesn't make them any better. Well, my point is here tonight, I had to realize that I did have a problem, and I was just like the people beside me at rehab. Amen. My crime was different, or my time was going to be different, but I've still done the same thing, and that's got high. I got high, I took, I took from myself, I took from my family, I stole from my wife, and I ain't proud of it today, but I thank God every day, and this might be hard for somebody to hear, and you may say, well, why would you say that, but I'm going to say it because it's the truth. I thank God for addiction today. I thank God that I went down that road. I thank God for everything I went through because I would not be here today preaching if it hadn't been for that addiction. Amen. Now you might be thinking here tonight, well, Jamie, you give an addiction credit. I'm not. But what I'm saying is God allowed addiction in my life. He knew that that was the only way that he was going to get me. And he was right because it took addiction to get me to the humble spot that I am today. Right, but it took right. God allowing that in my life. Uh -huh. And I asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart that night. Come on, Pastor. I thought I was saved. I thought I had done it, made the right decision. But I was just as lost as anything. I didn't really have Jesus Christ in my heart. I just knew of him. Come on. I went through the procedures of going to church, uh -huh. driving the church van, uh -huh. doing all these things a Christian should do, but I was going bound to hell because I had my heart in the wrong place. Say it, Pastor. Say it. Amen. Amen. I want to be honest with you tonight. I don't sugarcoat. I'm going to give you the word of God, and I'm going to tell you the truth, and it might save your life if you act on it. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. That's right. Asking Jesus Christ in your heart is the only way you're going to get to heaven. Amen. Praise Amen. God. If you hear here tonight, I'm going to be doing Psalm 17 Sunday. I have done some study on it. But David's talking about a fool's heart. Uh -huh. But what it's saying is you may have an atheist that does not believe in God, does not need God, and says that it's no God. Uh -huh. Then you have another man that believes that it's a God. But he don't want no part of God because he does not want to give his life up to serve God. Uh -huh. Then you have your so-called Christians, amen, that claim they know God, but their heart ain't for God. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. And I think about tying that in with recovery. Uh -huh. You have people that want no part of recovery. Don't want to work it. Don't care if they get clean or sober. They don't care if the next day comes. Then you have somebody that knows recovery can help them and get them on the right track, but they don't put no effort for it because they don't want to change their life. Uh -huh. Then you have somebody that claims to work recovery, but you're still going out with the same people, places, and things. Uh -huh. You're still doing the addictive lifestyle and living the same way as you were getting high. So at that point, you're not truly, you're not true to recovery. You're just walking and acting recovery. So the only way to work recovery is to be serious about recovery and work it and do something about it. And believe that recovery works through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
A lot of us, we want to stay clean, but we don't want to do the work that it takes to be clean. And I was guilty of that. Everybody told me, go do your 90-90, or go above that, go to every meeting, get online, do your online meetings, do this and do that, and I did. I was faithful to the meeting, but I really want faithful to recovery because I still want to do my old thing and just go to a meeting and think everything's going to be fine. I found out recovery works when you work it. Recovery works when you put your heart and soul and use it like it's your next breath of air. But Jesus Christ is your only hope. Amen. I want you to know that you can read every book in the world. You can read every subject in the world. But there's only one way you're going to get to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The only way. The only way. Yes, sir. I want you to know here tonight, you might be here tonight and said, I've done too much for Christ. He don't care about me. Yes, he does care about you. It's not a coincidence that you are here tonight, that I'm here. We are here because God has got us here at the right exact point in time. Amen. God's got a word for you here tonight coming up. God's got something that he wants everybody to know that he loves you and he don't care about your past. He just wants your future. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Number three. See how quick I can get off these things? Number three. <laughs> Change your environment. Whatever is taking you out of recovery, you need to make some plans to figure out how to change the environment. That's right. Let it go. People, places, things, attitudes, yes. uh, greed, love of money, you keep naming it. Anything that's taking you away from your environment of recovery, you need to figure out a plan, and you need to act on that plan quick. I want you to know here today also that it's people that didn't wake up this morning. Uh -huh. It may be somebody you know here today that's not here because of they thought that their life belonged to the drug, but the fentanyl got them, and they're not living anymore. Uh -huh. I hate to hear that. I hate to ride down the road and see somebody. Look, I done got so uh, fearful that when I ride down the road and see somebody just leaning like this on the steering wheel, Oh, my God, I got to stop. I got to stop. Make sure there ain't no den. That's how bad it's getting that you ride down the road and you pull in the gas station to get gas and somebody's laid on the ground hanging at the car. And I'm thinking about somebody's family. Somebody's family, somebody's kids is going to suffer because of that. What if that person don't make it? Where are those kids going? We all know addiction has put more kids in foster homes. It has broke up more families than anything in this world. Amen. It is killing more people today than car accidents. We have people dying every day due to fentanyl coming into our, our states and flooding in our little counties and our little towns like this. You know, it's going to take you, it's going to take me, it's going to take all of us in recovery to send the word that we can be sober, that we can be clean. And we need to reach every person we can through our lives. That's the most important thing that we can do. If you care about people and you want to see the people live a better life, then use your life to show that you care. Amen. Use your life to just reach out to somebody and tell them that, that, that what your hope is today. Give them your testimony. Tell them how happy you are today and that you don't have to get high. You don't have Amen. to use. Amen. We use because we feel like that that's our lifeline, that if we don't use, we're going to be sick and it's going to cost us to go steal steal and grab things and steal things from our houses. But here's the thing. I truly know without a shadow of a doubt tonight that, that God can deliver any man, any woman in this church tonight. Amen. Amen. But you got to want to be delivered here. How bad do you want it? Yeah. I used to come up this altar. I used to go to, not this altar, I'm sorry. But I used to go to other churches and other meetings and stuff and I would fly up to that altar. I would give my heart to Christ. I would say, Jesus, Everybody else said that you could take the taste out of my mouth and I would never want it again, but I wasn't ready to give it to Jesus. Uh -huh. I wanted to come up here and go through the little simple praying and the giving, but I wanted to take it back just as soon as I walked back to my seat. Uh -huh. I give it to him just a little while. I get back to my seat also. I, I, I can't do that. Jesus, give me back that prayer. I, I, I'm going back to do what I want to do. Uh -huh. See, we got to totally submit here tonight. We got to totally give him that drug. We got to totally give him our life. We got to totally give him that drink. You just can't sit it to the side and grab it back every time you want it. You're going to be sick for the rest of your life. You got to understand that 
when you give it to Jesus, you fully give it to him and you give it open heartedly and you don't want it back. It makes you sick when you think about it. It says in the Bible that that when people sin and they do different things, it's like a dog going back to vomit. Uh-huh. And how nasty that may seem, that's what it's like when we go back to addiction. It's like going back to the vomit, the same mess, the destruction, the hurt, the pain, the misery. And we keep going back to it. And we keep putting it back in our body. We keep doing good. We go back and put it back in our body. One day you may not have the opportunity to wake up. You may not have the opportunity to see your children, your mother and father, your grandparents, or your brothers and sisters, or your nephews. You may never see them again because of that one choice you make. Just think about it. you got family out there that's praying for y'all. Yes. i got family that's praying for me. Yes. And they're thinking every day in the back of their head, is tomorrow going to be the day that my son or my daughter lets me down? you got people cheering you on that you have come so far and they're so proud Amen. of you. Amen. Don't Amen. let them down. Amen. 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 You do all you can do and you fight for this recovery. And you fight for your family and you fight for yourself and do what you got to do to get your life together. That's right. Amen. Review your past attempt at quitting. What did you go through when you last quit? What are some things that caused you to go back what are some issues that made you relapse? Did you do this when you quit? Did you go around this person? Did you do this thing? Did you get in your car and go somewhere you didn't supposed to? Did you still have those addictive thoughts? Did you still have all this chaos in your life? One thing we need to understand tonight is when you quit, you quit. You don't look back. You look forward. Amen. Number five, create a support network. And that's exactly what we're doing. All of us are doing tonight. Right. This is a network. The NA means in town. The AA means network. It's tools. It's a trade. It's something that you should put in your belt and use every day like a carpenter. A carpenter cannot build a house without the tools to build a house with. If he don't have the right tools, he can't do his job. In your recovery, if you don't have the right recovery tools, you can't work your recovery. And it ain't going to work because you don't know how to work it. I think about this today. How important is your recovery to y'all? So I want to take us to Matthew 11, 28, and 29. The reason uh, I think God gave me this scripture right here, because Jesus is trying to tell in this scripture before I read it, that his yoke is light. His way is better. His way is easier. Do we have to put in some footwork like we do our recovery? Yes, we got to do our part for Christ. We just can't just come up to him, oh, Jesus I need help. I need I need you to deliver me. And you just walk backwards and still do what you want, still go use, still go in here, still do everything you want to do. It don't work that way. You got to surrender like you did in your recovery. Like step one, you admitted that you were powerless and that your life has become unmanageable. When you go to Jesus, you have to go to him open heartedly and you have to be powerless. You have to give him everything in your life and remember what he has already done for you at the cross. And if he went to the cross for you and he died for you, surely he's going to keep you clean. Amen. Amen. A lot of people say we're responsible for keeping us clean, and that is partial truth. We have to do the work. We have to work the steps. We have to do what we got to do to stay clean. But Jesus is going to give you the strength that you've never had to fight that battle of addiction. Amen. And I think about the wonderful thing is, when I go to the Lord and I said, Jesus, come in my heart, save me. I'll admit that I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died at the cross. I know you was bur- you died, you was buried, and then I know you rose on the third day. And I think about that, and I think about the strength of it. I think about the power of the resurrection, that the grave couldn't hold Jesus in, that the world couldn't hold him in. When the man, when men thought that they had him down, he come out the grave. Amen. amen. His power. Amen. You got to think about that resurrection power. When you want to give up in your recovery and you want to say, I've had enough and I can't do it no more, think about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Think about the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us when we have made him Lord of our lives, the power that we have in us now. We have a part of God that's living in us, the strength of God, the goodness of God. Amen. The mighty comforter living in us. The almighty confidence that gives us the strength that we never had 
to fight a battle. Yeah. But now we got the power of God that lives in us. Yeah. What a Amen. wonderful thing to know. Yeah. And I'm going to read these two scriptures right here. And they come out of uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Come to me. Now I want you to think about this. Come to me. When you go to step one, it says admit that you are powerless, right? right. Well, you have to admit that you are powerless and that you need Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. It says, come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah, Amen? Amen. You all see a might in there? Did you see a maybe? No. It says, I will give you rest. Do you believe that Jesus will give you rest here today? Amen. 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 Praise God. Listen to verse 29 right here. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Praise God for that. Amen. So listen right here. It says on this first part I wrote down. This and a, it's, 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 think about this right here. Jesus is saying, come to me. Ain't that special? Ain't that powerful, y'all? Amen. When you see your life the way it used to be and you have Jesus saying, come to me. Amen. Come to me and I will give you rest. Don't they give y'all a peace and some hope and, and some power in your life to want to make a change and, yes, and to not look back at your past but to move on? Amen. I thank God. Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise God for that right there. Yes. Jesus Christ is king tonight. Yes. He is almighty king. He's the same as he was yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. Amen. Amen. I think about the Apostle Paul. How the Apostle Paul was so strong, and, and, and he ended up going to jail. And he was sitting there with chains shackled down in the most foulest prison that there was. And I think about the power of God that Paul had in his heart. That where he could sit there and sing hymns and praises through the shackles, amen. That he could be powerful and happy and praising the Lord for being in prison. Because he knew that he was already free. Even though he was bounded in chains and locked up in a most violent prison, he knew that he was free. Amen. Do you know that you're free here tonight? Amen. 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 The devil will tell you you're not free and that you will never be set free. But you remember these scriptures right here of what it says. Amen. Come to me. Amen. Amen. Those who are weak and I will give you rest. That's right. Jesus can give you all rest here tonight too. When we go to the men's group, we go to the women's group, we're going to break up after that. We're going to come to this altar. And if you're here tonight, you need to come up here and just talk to Jesus. Amen. Tell him what you need. It's nothing wrong with asking Jesus for stuff. It's nothing wrong with giving him your heart. It's nothing wrong with telling him that you need him. He wants us tonight. Everybody says, well, Jesus is too far away. He don't want me. Jesus is here. He's got his hand down. He just wants you to reach up and grab his. Right. And he will lead you in the right way. And he will give you the rest. And he will show you how light that his yoke is. And he will show you how light that burden is. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go to a word in prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you for the message tonight. We thank you for the word. We just thank you for the uh, atmosphere out here and the congregation, Lord. As people say amen and hallelujah and just praise you, Lord. It's so good to hear your name and praise is lifted up to you. Lord, just lift every heart as we go to group. Lord, just if there's somebody here battling the battle, Lord, just let them just share their hurt in group. But better yet, at the end of the service, let them share their life with you. Lord, we pray for the women that's here tonight. We pray for the kids. We pray for the men's housing. We pray for women's housing. We pray for different ones here tonight that are struggling with situations, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will bless somebody here tonight that's going through a battle. Lord, just if they can't get out the battle, Lord, just give them the strength and the peace they need to get through the battle. Lord, for whatever reason it is, Lord, if there's somebody here tonight that has never asked you to come in their heart, Lord, just have that mighty conviction done, Lord, and just bring that person to you. Lord, just use us to keep humbling ourselves to speak 
your word and learn your word and to give the truth and to use our lives to show that we have you in it. Lord, just bless somebody here tonight. Give them salvation, Lord. Lord, your power is the only way that anybody here can be saved. So we ask that your work be done tonight. Lord, we thank you and praise you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name, the church says. Amen. 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 If you've never been here, the women will meet back here. And the men will meet back there in that circle. And the kids follow Bobby. I